Welcome back to Street Smart. Stocks may be falling today a little bit, but our next guest reminds us that it's the long haul which makes or breaks fund managers and, of course, individual investors as well. Thomas Soviero manages over $13 billion in assets for Fidelity Management and Research, including the Fidelity Advisor Leveraged Fund. The fund gained an average 15% over 10 years through the first quarter, making it the top performing diversified stock fund for that period and dethroning Ken Hebner's uh, CGM Focus Fund, just FYI. Tom, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about your basic strategies for this incredible success. I mean, how much I wonder when I was first looking at your returns, how much does your strategy shift during uh, these tough waters that you have you've had to navigate over the past four years? Thanks a lot, Matt. I'll uh, I'll try to tackle that question and uh, appreciate you having me here. Uh, essentially, you know, the strategy always starts with trying to find cheap companies that uh, happen to have a lot of leverage and, and as we say we like to make uh, leverage your friend not your foe and um, you do I think in answer to your question I think over the span of an economic cycle there are times when you want to move up in in quality and and you can do that by buying you know larger cap names within the leverage universe and and the prospectus has leeway to even buy investment grade companies as well so if I became bearish on kind of the economic cycle or the credit cycle, I could always adjust the portfolio. So where where are you as far as bearish, bullish, and, and buying into highly leveraged companies right now? Are you looking for more risk? I I'm, I'm, I would say I'm moderately uh, at risk right now. I, I'm pretty fully invested. I think the credit markets are extremely healthy. I, I know you had Stephen Schwarzman on earlier today, and he was talking about the value part of that equation. Um, I think there's a lot of truth to that. You have to keep an eye on the value side of the argument. But right now, the credit markets couldn't be stronger. The high yield market, for example, is, is funding uh, 90 billion in issues a, a quarter at this rate, all time record highs. Uh, you have the economy improving. So I think you have some pretty good tailwinds. I don't think it's uh, time to get too conservative uh, with this particular uh, I fund. I would imagine, Tom, if you're looking for highly leveraged investments, uh, that you can find a lot of value out there right now. Or am I wrong? I mean, is, are a lot of people barking up the same tree here? No, I still think there's a lot of inefficiencies in this market. I mean, essentially, people look at the balance sheets and they get scared in, in a lot of these names. You know, there's, they, they see a, a, a single B rating and 50% debt to cap ratio and They'd rather look at something else. And, and I think there's still a bit of risk aversion in general uh, after the Great Recession. So uh, I'm seeing a lot of value, obviously less so after the big rally in, in 09 and, and last year to, to a lesser degree. But uh, there's still opportunities out there for sure. So where are you finding that? I mean, uh, do you, are you looking to financials for that? This is what people think of automatically financials or real estate when they think of leverage. But are there other areas? I, I really like the industrial and material sectors. The, I, I think corporate America did a phenomenal job restructuring its cost base uh, during the recession. You saw that. Uh, you were just talking about the productivity numbers earlier. Um, so I think w with a little bit of revenue growth and some exporting with the weak dollar, the industrial space makes a lot of sense, as well as materials for the same reasons. Is, is there... I like these, no, go these, on, these, industries that are, these industries that are a little bit of a play on the industrialization of China and India and Brazil, if you will. I wonder if there's a risk of the Fed kind of pulling the rug out under under you here as we come to the end of QE2. A lot of people are wondering if they'll start draining excess liquidity or even turn to uh, actually raise rates by the end of the year. Is that is that a concern? Yeah, I think that's a concern, although keep in mind a lot of times the cyclical names like the ones I'm talking about continue to run in the midst of rising rates because it's the, the rates are going up because the economy is gaining momentum. So it's a it's a more of a concern for, say, two years out than the next 12 months. You have an energy uh, bias as well. You like energy companies. Three of the companies in your top 10 holdings, I believe, are energy related, right? Yes. And, uh, you know, the two of those names are, are natural gas names and and coal companies. So, um, you know, one of the unfortunate uh, outcomes from what happened in Japan is people are relooking at coal and natural gas as, uh, as you know, for electricity. And, and it, you know, and that's kind of increased the need for those commodities. I, I think the U.S. is long a lot of natural gas and we have a, a 
you know, very good exposure in the coal space as well, and we're exporting uh, increasing amounts of coal to places like China.